All right, this is an introduction to 3D Studio Max um, for those who are completely new with it. Now, when you first start using 3D Studio Max, this is this is the generic basic setup. Um, what you're going to be doing is you have to realize that this is your workspace. Um, you've got the perspective view top, uh, front, top, and left. Okay. Now you can change these views at any point in time that you want. Um, you can always go up to front and uh, you click on it and there we go. You click on it and uh, you can choose one of the the um, other views. Um, for initial users you always want to stay with these viewports. Now if you notice this one has kind of a uh, gold band around it and that's um, that's basically because it's active all right now when working in 3d studio max we're going to start with the modeling tools so that means that um, for the most part you are probably not going to use um, these uh, the way they do everything is over here is your sidebar and everything is you have your create panel, you have your modify panel, um, hierarchy, which we're not going to really touch right off the bat. We're going to use the, we're not going to use the motion panel, the display panel, or the utilities. Those are not ones that we're going to start off with. The initial thing is that you want to learn how to use the basic tools. Okay. Now, um, with this, I always tell people that you never want to model in the perspective or orthographic mode and the reason for that is people new to 3D space don't get the the ramifications of it okay um, so the first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do is basically we're going to go to customize and then we're going to go to unit setup this is the key step that most people don't don't learn right when they start this out okay now the units are for uh, metric or metric units or, or US standard units within max um, but the default is a generic unit now if you go to the unit setup button it will say that one unit is equal to inches alright I always set it to one, one unit is equal to meters um, that works fine fine by me and the reason I use generic units is because you don't have to think of uh, the US fractional set and I use generic units a lot uh, because uh, one unit is equal to one meter and that's because I, I transfer things over to game engines and that's generally the scale there um, so that's that's pretty much what I do um, but you always want to be aware of your units because creating a unit in max um, if I just draw a box here you're already at 20 units so this is 20 meters all right so it really depends on what your scale your thing is now um, drawing a box um, or any of the geometrical shapes are a series of clicks so you click and drag for sizing, let go, and then drag again for the the next dimension in it. So the box is two clicks. The box is used basically to click the height and width, and then the length. All right. The cone, same thing, is a click for radius, a click for or uh, a drag for height and then it's another click for creating the cone itself um, the sphere is just one click the geosphere again one click um, the cylinder is two clicks you can't see that over there uh, the tube is going to be one two three clicks all right um, generally, we in a modeling um, 
feature i don't know a lot of people who use the torus a lot but the torus is two clicks the pyramid is two clicks the plane is one click and uh, the teapot is one click now you notice that i create all this stuff i created all this stuff from the uh, front viewport that means that all of it is actually going to be on its side all right so that means if you're going to create stuff i'm going to just delete all this you can use the delete key so if you notice all that stuff that i created is in the front viewport now if i create the same pyramid it's going to create it in a different axis all right now that brings us up to the axes um, with axes you have your x and y as your hor uh, let's let's call it um, let's call it east and west north and south um, on a map that's sitting on a table so your axes are pretty much here um, you can kind of see you can kind of see when you click on it so X is moving it left or right this is moving it vertical on the 2d plane and the Z axis will move it up in space now it's really hard to tell what you're doing because some you're not used to the 3d the, the 3d plane that's why again I tell people don't go crazy in the perspective view okay now now that I've got that on there um, you can actually grab this um, and rotate back and forth uh, with and you, you can actually see the northeast south on the perspective view um, but if you are um, moving stuff around uh, your tools here are the majority of the tools that you're going to use this will zoom the camera in and out alright you can also use the control alt and middle mouse button for that same tool alright zoom all will zoom all of them oops I'm sorry will zoom all of them in and out okay um, zoom extend selection zoom extend selection will frame the what you have selected alright zoom extends all will frame all the the stuff that you have selected um, and the bottom three the pan view um, I'm gonna skip this the field of view the field of view changes the actual focal length of the camera alright now a lot of times people use the field of view to zoom in and what happens is it causes the the whole camera to slow down or the the scene to slow down and when that happens sometimes you have to go into uh, your configure and if you go to field of view perspective uses field of view change this always back to like 32 or 45 or whatever you feel you like um, so I always tell people to be aware of the field of view button you're better using the zoom um, the field of view changes the lens um, zoom actually dollies back and forth um, the next we have is our pan pan moves left right up and down in the scene um, and then we have the orbit of the object now the orbit object if you hold it down you always want the first one um, orbit around a selected object because that will move it around a selected object whereas if we're off of this and we use this orbit it you see it actually rotating around the, the camera point here's a I'm gonna just middle mouse button will pan so if you see I'm zooming around a non selected object and it'll actually zoom around the the central focus point of that object all right and then you have maximize toggle viewport all right maximize toggle viewport will take the, the highlighted viewport and turn it into one thing now 
Alt W does the same thing. Now, this is the basic user interface in Max. All right, but for the most part, Control Alt middle mouse button zooms in and out. Alt middle mouse button zooms in and out or um, rotates around the object. And if you have the object uh, selected, it will rotate around that object. And then middle mouse button pans back and forth. So those are the three shortcuts that you really want to know and use when you're working on in 3D Studio Max around the space. The other thing is, one more thing is, I'm not a big fan of the grids. Um, once I've got my basic object in there, I'm going to keep working at it. All right, so the grids, if you hit G, it's a quick shortcut key to turn off your grids. Um, the new users, though, I generally recommend you uh, recommend them on because it will show you how to um, basically uh, where you're at in the scene. All right. All right. Gone to the next one.